Today, we are looking at my watch collection. If you follow the channel, you're probably well aware of what's in my collection, what's changed around. I haven't done a video like this for about a year and a half. It's not often that I just get them out like this and, and just admire them as one thing. This looks good. I mean, of course, I think that I bought them, but I'm actually really happy with that lineup. Welcome back to Bark and Jack. I'm Adrian. This channel is about drinking coffee, talking watches. I have six watches on my seven watches. I have a collection of watches on my desk, and this is what we're going to be looking at today. This is my watch collection. I'm going to do an overview of what I have right now, but the focus is actually going to be where it's going to go, where my vision is, and, and where my interests are, because my interests have changed quite drastically from when I started out in watches and when I started the channel, in fact. This is my whole wearable collection. I'm actually wearing one of the watches that I don't normally wear. This is a G-Shock. Um, I really do enjoy it when I do wear it, but it's uh, it just doesn't get any wrist time. So it's, that's just how it is. I didn't know which order to do the watches in. So I literally just put it in the order in which I bought them. Before we go any further, this video is sponsored by Chrono24. Later in the video, I'm gonna explain how you can win a shit ton of money. Um, just by doing something quite simple, but I'll, I'll explain that later on. The first watch that we're going to look at, we're kind of just starting, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but you could say that we're starting right at the top. This is my Rolex Submariner, the 50th anniversary Submariner, the 16610LV. This was my only watch for quite a long time. It wasn't my first nice watch. This was my second nice watch, actually. I always wanted a Submariner. I loved the Submariner design, and I just, I love the Submariner line of watches. But I didn't want to get just a normal run-of-the-mill Submariner, and so I wanted something slightly different, and that's exactly what the Kermit is all about. Next watch is my uh, most expensive to the cheapest. This is my CWC G10 or W10, depending on, on what you want to call it. This is the military, or was rather, the British military issue watch. I bought this off eBay for about 60, 70 quid, I think it was. It was all bashed up, all scratched up. The glass was completely destroyed. It just needed a bit of poly watch and a bit of a polish. Uh, and this was actually issued back in 2006. You can see the 06 in the serial number and the W10 means that this was issued to someone in the army, the British army. It needs a new battery. That's why it's not ticking very well. I've done a whole video talking about how cool this watch is, but I think it, it is awesome. This is a watch with genuine heritage. This is the real McCoy for 60 quid. You can't get them for 60 quid now. They're, uh, I think uh, bad ones you can get for 120. They're probably around 200 pounds now. But even at 200 pounds, you're still getting a genuine thing, a genuine tool. Um, and it just looks awesome. It's This is a proper tool watch. Watch collecting doesn't need to be expensive, he says. The next watch is the Rolex Explorer 14270. This one is from 1999. I actually bought this watch four years ago to do a review on uh, on this channel. I bought it to slate it. I bought it to rip into how boring it is and how overrated the Explorer was four years later. This is by far my favorite watch in my collection. And it is genuinely my favorite watch full stop. Even if I was in the position to own my grail watches, this would still be in my collection and this would still be a daily watch for me. I just love everything. I've done so many videos talking about why I love this watch, but there's just such a strong connection to this thing. And I genuinely love it. What's hated more within the watch community, Rolex or an Apple watch? People are probably gonna say Rolex. This is Apple Watch Series 6. I don't wear this watch often, and I don't wear it as um, just a watch. This is a fitness. I don't do much fitness, and you can tell. But I do go swimming twice a week. As a fitness tracker, as a fitness computer, it is incredible. And I love the fact that it can so easily monitor what I'm doing within a swimming session. Ironically, the most untool watch looking device that I have is the one that gets used as a tool the most. The next watch is a watch that I have a love-hate relationship with. This is my Tudor Black Bay 58 Black, the original Black Bay 58. I keep trying to sell this watch because I kind of just feel like this is, it's, it's a very Instagrammable watch. It's just so photogenic. 
and it's it's kind of too good looking. No, I don't know. I don't know what it is. This watch has a lot of character. But I think a lot of its character is injected. It's kind of manufactured character. I'm only keeping hold of it for the moment because of this strap. This strap, I just feel suits this watch so much that over the past few weeks, this has been my go-to watch. But it will be leaving the collection at some point. I'll talk about changes later on. Next watch is the Hamilton Khaki Mechanical Field Watch. The best, in my opinion, the best watch that you can get for under 500 pounds. This retails for around 300, 400 pounds. This was actually a gift to me uh, from uh, Ben over at Wristworthy, uh, but uh, he, he gave it to me because we'd been talking about it so much. This watch is, again, it's, it's kind of like the next step up from the CWC G10. It's one of those watches that doesn't have to break the bank. 400 pounds is still a sizable chunk of cash, but this is such a solid watch. This is, it's essentially the mechanical version of the CWC. This movement inside has 80 hours of power reserve. It's only got 50 meters of water resistance, but it's not a water bound watch. It's just a solid tool watch and that's what, I love about it. A watch that does have a good amount of water resistance is my last watch in my collection, and that is my Omega Seamaster Professional 300 meter. This is the most recent watch that I've bought. It is perhaps over all of these watches, this is probably my most worn watch. It's got such an incredible movement inside. It's such a good looking watch. It's the sort of thing that you can just, if you're waiting, I don't know, you just got a coffee and you're waiting for the coffee to be made. It's the sort of thing that you can just look at and just enjoy. The dial is incredible. The amount of depth within the dial, from the hands going down to the dial, but then within the hour markers as well. This watch is just, you can just get lost looking at it. And that's not even talking about the, the movement at the back. The movement is, uh, it's not the best looking movement, but it is a good looking movement. The performance of it is the highlight though. This movement can handle magnetic fields, shock, temp fluctuations. It can just handle life. It feels bomb proof. After the Tudor going, the Seamaster is probably gonna be the next watch that goes. Not because I dislike it, not because there's anything wrong with it, apart from the bracelet, the bracelet's horrible, but it's probably gonna go because the watches that I wanna get next might render this watch essentially redundant within my collection. Before I talk about that, let's talk about Chrono24, the sponsor of this video. Chrono24 is the world's watch marketplace, but they've been working hard here on YouTube, building their YouTube content, and they are now doing a $10,000 voucher giveaway. All you need to do to enter is to click on the link in the, after the video, click on the link in the description down below or in that first comment, and that will take you over to their channel. Subscribe to their channel, but also that link will be to a video, their giveaway video, and you just need to leave a comment. They will announce a winner when they hit 100,000 subscribers that's a lot of cash to win you could buy a whole collection with that or just one killer watch there are a handful of watches that have popped up on my radar that i've either spent time with or I'd, I'm, I'm intrigued to spend time with and they are around generally modern larger watches iwc is a brand that i love there must be a point when i do own a pilot's watch from IWC and the new big Pilot 43 did feel awesome. So that's very much in my headlights. Another bigger watch that is in my headlights as well is Panerai. I've recently got hands on with a cluster. This is gonna ruin that video. There's soon gonna be a video of me getting hands on with a handful of Panerais and um, I love them. I've, I've ruined the video. Now that I've spent some proper time with Panerai, I absolutely love them. I feel like I'm just at the start of my journey exploring Panerai. I'm intrigued, let's just leave it there. I'm intrigued in Panerai. A big watch that I really wanna get hands on with is the new Omega, it's not even out yet, the new Omega Aquaterra with the small seconds. I've only seen pictures of this thing, but from the pictures, it looks amazing. It looks like a brilliant combination of little touches of old, I'm not gonna say vintage because it isn't vintage inspired, but the small seconds most certainly has an old traditional design about it. But the fact that that's packaged in a modern Aquaterra watch with an incredible movement, just from what I know already, love it. A watch that is most certainly in the running and that I will be getting, it just depends on how and when, is the new Rolex Explorer 2 with the white dial. That is, I think that's gonna be my everyday watch. 
they've done some really slight adjustments to the case, which I think makes it a bit more wearable, but also I just love the look of that watch. The movement inside it is amazing. The design of the watch is amazing. And I love the fact that my first Rolex was an Explorer 2 white dial, and I'd really love for my next everyday watch to be the Rolex Explorer 2. There is one more watch that I need within my collection. And although when I look at my collection, I think this is awesome. And I love this because it's so utilitarian. Everything has a purpose, but there is a watch that's missing and that's a dress watch. I could dress up my Explorer, put a nice black leather strap on it and then just kind of tart it up a bit. But I do feel the need to have a dress watch. And vintage Cartier is something that has been a real draw. I'm not normally a Cartier kind of person, but when it comes to dressing up, that's your opportunity to go a bit beyond your normal character. I've got a wedding to go to next month, and I think it'd be really cool just to have a, a subtle, chilled out little vintage Cartier on the wrist. Anyway, guys, that is my collection. Let me know your thoughts. Roast me if you want. I'd be very happy to hear your thoughts on, on what you think sucks, what you think's great within the collection. Drop a comment down below and let me know. Don't forget about that $10,000 voucher giveaway that Chrono24 are doing. We'll use the links below. They'll take you to their video. You just need to subscribe. You just need to leave a comment on that video and then you're in for the running for a $10,000 voucher. Guys, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, hit the subscribe button down there and the bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you wanna check out a watch shop and watch blog, jump over to barkandjack.com and if you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.